Lattice vectors. In this lecture, we're going to get a lot more mathematical in how we describe these periodic structures. We'll talk about what's called direct lattice vectors. We'll talk about reciprocal lattice vectors and the concept of a reciprocal lattice. And then we'll talk about converting between direct and reciprocal lattices. Direct lattice vectors. The first type and the least common type of lattice vector is called an axis vector. And these axis vectors point along the edges of what would be called the conventional unit cell. So this is a nice intuitive picture of our periodic structure. And these axis vectors point along the edges. So they very intuitively describe the size and shape of our unit cell. The problem with axis vectors is, is that they only classify the seven crystal systems. They can't uniquely classify all 14 Brave lattices. Then we introduce the second type of lattice vector, and these are called translation vectors. And so when most people say lattice vector, they're really talking about these translation vectors. And these translation vectors do uniquely describe all 14 Brave lattices but they're less intuitive. I can't look at the translation vectors and tell you immediately what type of lattice that is, its size and shape. I really would have to think about it a lot. I probably would have to plot a bunch of points on a computer and stare at it for a while to figure out what's going on. We can also talk about primitive translation vectors and primitive axis vectors. So primitive vectors point between adjacent sites in the lattice. It's not reaching any farther. So it's sort of the shortest possible choices for those vectors are the primitive translation vectors. Here is a summary of how we can calculate our translation vectors from the axis vectors. Sometimes what I like to do, if I wanna take a lot of control over how I'm orienting my lattice and the size and the shape, I'll actually start by defining the axis vectors and then from that calculate my translation vectors and I use these equations and of course it depends on the symmetry that we're talking about. Let's talk about non-primitive lattice vectors. So we have a lattice at the bottom and I've drawn immediately here the primitive translation vectors. These are pointing between adjacent sites in the lattice. And I have two for this two dimensional lattice, a T1 and a T2, and there's no shorter choices. Now we can talk about a non-primitive lattice vector or just a lattice vector. And a lattice vector points from any one site in the lattice to any other site. Now, in order for that to be a valid or correct lattice vector, it has to be an integer combination of the primitive translation vectors. So if it's not an integer combination, something's wrong here. I either have the wrong primitive translation vectors or I don't have a correct lattice vector. But we can have primitive and non-primitive lattice vectors. Notice this one, we're going from one site to the next, but it's three T1s and two T2. So it's an integer combination of the primitive translation vectors giving us a correct non-primitive lattice vector. Now let's talk about reciprocal lattice vectors and the reciprocal lattice. So the direct lattice, this is the thing that you can touch, you can build, it's the real thing. And so we're describing in three dimensions, a direct lattice with three primitive translation vectors that I'm calling T1, T2, and T3. And I've plotted them here and then enclosed the parallel pipehead that they describe, that little volume of space that they're describing. So that would be a unit cell, if you will. We could stack that onto itself with no voids, no overlaps, and construct the entire lattice. So our direct lattice, direct lattice vectors. Now we're going to pick two of those primitive translation vectors, T1 and T2. Two vectors define a plane. So I'm drawing T1 and T2 here, and they're defining a plane. And of course, this is a periodic structure, so this plane repeats in both you know, one direction and the other, and the, the planes of infinite extent as well. 
And there's a separation between those planes, and we'll call that distance lambda, or lambda 3 in this case. So we'd call it lambda 3. So we can define a new vector. We'll define the vector so that the direction is perpendicular to these planes, which does not necessarily put it in the direction of T3. It is perpendicular to the planes, and we'll make its magnitude 2 pi divided by the spacing between the planes. After we do that, we have calculated our first translation vector of the reciprocal lattice. So we will call it a reciprocal lattice vector. Now let's pick translation vectors T1 and T3. Two vectors, they define a plane. That plane repeats itself. I'm only showing two planes, but it, re it repeats itself in both directions. So I can define a second vector here that is perpendicular to these planes and has a magnitude 2 pi divided by the spacing between the planes. When I do that, I will have constructed my second reciprocal lattice vector, T2. And last, the last combination of two translation vectors, two direct translation vectors, will be T2 and T3 which two vectors define a plane, that plane repeats itself, and I can define a third vector that is perpendicular to those planes and has a magnitude 2 pi divided by the spacing between those planes. And when I do that, I get my third reciprocal lattice vector that we're calling T1. Now that I have three new vectors, three reciprocal lattice vectors, we can talk about a lattice that they define. This is our reciprocal lattice. So the reciprocal lattice is not one that we can touch. It's just really talking about the symmetry of the direct lattice. And we'll get into a little bit more of what this means. But try not to think of the reciprocal lattice as having structure in it. So if our direct lattice is made of a periodic array of hearts, it's not like that translates into any kind of shape in the reciprocal lattice. The reciprocal lattice is simply characterizing symmetry. It's characterizing the directions that planes repeat themselves in the direct lattice. So that's our reciprocal lattice. And it's defined by three primitive reciprocal lattice vectors. Now we can do a similar thing with the reciprocal lattice vectors that we did with the direct lattice vectors. We can pair them off. If we pair off T1 and T2, those define a plane. That plane repeats itself in reciprocal space. We can define a new vector that is perpendicular to that plane and has a magnitude that's 2 pi divided by the spacing between those planes. And when I do that, I actually get one of my direct lattice vectors back. I can pair off T1 and T3 in the reciprocal lattice. Those two vectors define a plane. That plane repeats itself in reciprocal space. I can define a second vector now that's perpendicular to those planes and has a magnitude 2 pi divided by the spacing between those planes. And I will have recovered a second of my direct lattice vectors. Then last, I can pair off T2 and T3 in reciprocal space. Those two vectors define a plane, that plane repeats itself, and I define a third vector that is perpendicular to those planes and has a magnitude 2 pi divided by the spacing. And I will have recovered my third direct lattice vector. So we can look at these side by side. And since we have constructed one lattice from the other following the exact same procedure, that's why we call these reciprocal lattices. And in fact, just looking at the lattice and the symmetry points, I really can't tell whether it's a direct or reciprocal lattice. We would have to be told that. But a lot of the properties, all of the properties that apply to a direct lattice apply to the reciprocal lattice as well and they're unique pairs. If we have a direct lattice, it only has one reciprocal lattice, and that reciprocal lattice will always take us back to that same direct lattice. So we can hop back and forth. Here is some common reciprocal direct lattice pairs. 
So a simple cubic lattice, its reciprocal lattice is still simple cubic. A body-centered cubic lattice, its reciprocal lattice is face-centered cubic. So in reciprocal space, it would have face-centered cubic symmetry, and that'll become a big deal later. A face-centered cubic lattice in reciprocal space has body-centered cubic symmetry, and hexagonal becomes hexagonal. So those are some common direct and reciprocal lattice pairs. Now let's talk about converting between direct and reciprocal lattice vectors. We did it graphically, but we can also do this mathematically. So let's look at two of these vectors, T2 and T3. So those define a plane, and in fact, they define a parallelogram. And we know from vector calculus that the area of this parallelogram is the magnitude of the cross product of T2 and T3. So we can calculate the area of that parallelogram. If we look at all three lattice vectors together, they're defining a volume, a, a unit cell, if you will. This is a parallel pipe ed. Using vector calculus again, we can calculate the volume of that parallel pipe ed using a triple product. So T dot T2 cross T3, which we just calculated the cross product to get the area. What if we wanted the spacing between the planes that we've been calling lambda? Well, that's the volume of the parallel pipe ed divided by the area of the parallelogram. And we have two expressions for those now. Remember the volume was this triple product and the area was the magnitude of the cross product. Now let's think about calculating one of our reciprocal lattice vectors, T1. We know the magnitude of that is two pi divided by the spacing between those planes, lambda, and we have an expression for that now. We also know the direction of it. The direction of that vector is perpendicular to that plane defined by T2 and T3. So that means if we look at the cross product of T2 and T3, that's in a direction that is perpendicular to the plane. So all we do is divide by the magnitude of the cross product and we get a unit vector that is in the direction of the primitive translation vector. And we do another unit vector over here and that gives us a convenient equation to calculate the reciprocal lattice vector. We can just move this magnitude over to the right-hand side and we have the start of an equation over there. So let's go ahead and do that. So we've solved this second equation for T1. We brought this magnitude T1 over to the right-hand side. Well, we know what this magnitude is. It is two pi over the period. But we also have an expression for the period that we calculated on the previous slide. That expression is the triple product divided by the magnitude of the cross product. Now I can cross off this cross product with this cross product, and we end up with our final equation. This is how we would calculate reciprocal lattice vector T1 from our translation vectors from the direct lattice. Now I could do this analysis for each one of the three reciprocal lattice vectors, but it's all the same. So I'll just go ahead and write them. If I did that same procedure with all, I would end up with this top row of equations. And then if I repeated that analysis again, but starting with the reciprocal lattice vectors, I would get the equations for calculating the direct lattice vectors from the reciprocal lattice vectors. So we can now use these equations and just understand graphically what's happening, but we can use these equations to go back and forth if we need to. And by the way, for 2D direct and reciprocal lattice vectors, here's the revised equations for doing that, derived in a similar way. So in the reciprocal lattice, all the rules from our direct lattice apply here. So we can talk about primitive reciprocal lattice vectors and just non-primitive or general reciprocal lattice vectors. But to be a valid reciprocal lattice vector, non-primitive, it still has to be an integer combination of the primitive reciprocal lattice vectors.
So I'm using all capital letters to remember that we're in reciprocal space and I'm using the lowercase letters for the direct lattice. So I'm also using uppercase letters for these integers in reciprocal space. So just like the direct lattice, we have primitive reciprocal lattice vectors and non-primitive reciprocal lattice vectors.